Hi there, my name is Jenna Overbaugh and I am a therapist here at NoCD and I'm here to talk to you today about the other part of ERP that people sometimes forget about, which is RP or response prevention. So RP is the second half of the ERP process other than exposures. And it's really important, if not the most important part of the whole entire process. Sometimes we tend to think that exposures are where it's at and exposures are really why ERP is so helpful and why exposures are definitely necessary, meaning it is necessary to kind of go outside of your comfort zone it's even more necessary, I would argue, to make sure that while you're doing that, you're messing with OCD and anxiety's pattern, meaning you want to be sure that as you're challenging yourself, that you are resisting your rituals or reducing rituals, postponing rituals, whatever it means to mess with OCD's pattern. We know that obsessions and intrusive thoughts are not necessarily the problem in OCD. We know that anxiety is not necessarily the problem in OCD. Rather, what is the problem are our compulsions, our safety behaviors or rituals that we do to feel better, these compulsions that we feel compelled to do even though we don't want to do them. What these compulsions do is they temporarily make us feel better, but they actually reinforce the obsession for later. So by doing these compulsions or these rituals, we actually tell our brain, unconsciously or not, that this thought or this experience warranted some type of response in the first place. So that's really where response prevention comes in and why it plays such a huge role in the whole OCD recovery process. If we're just continually exposing ourselves and pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone and doing the same rituals that we've always done, nothing really changes. We're still doing exactly the same things that we've been doing before. If anything, we're just triggering ourselves more and making those patterns worse. There has to be a change and the change really comes into play when we do response prevention. Response prevention means ideally we would work towards resisting those rituals, but that's not always possible for some people. Sometimes that's really challenging and it just feels too hard or too much too fast. So while that's ultimately the goal a lot of the times is to resist your compulsions altogether, Sometimes we may have to start somewhere else. You could also try to mess with OCD's pattern by reducing compulsions or doing some less satisfying version of it so that OCD doesn't get exactly what it wants. You could also try to postpone your rituals. So putting some time and space in between the stimuli or the trigger and your compulsion, which obviously feeds the whole OCD cycle. Something else that you can do is you can undo your ritual. So this is not something that we would want people to do where they go out of their way to do a compulsion and they feel like they get a freebie. Oh, I can just undo it after. But for example, if you find yourself, say, washing your hands, you could technically undo that compulsion afterwards. So you could then go and touch something that's dirty, but in a way that's challenging but manageable. The whole point here is to mess with OCD's pattern. We want to make sure that we are no longer giving OCD exactly what it wants, when it wants it, and how it wants it. So often we can get into this uh, trick of where we give OCD exactly the ritual that it wants and the exact pattern that it wants it, and we do it exactly when the OCD wants. So we're pretty much serving exactly what OCD wants on a silver platter and asking, is there anything else I can do for you? And that feels good in the moment, but it just reinforces that it needs to continue asking us for more and more next time. So it's absolutely critical that we find some way to mess with OCD's pattern. And a lot of professionals would even say that the only point of an exposure is to practice response prevention so that you can actually put yourself in a situation and have an opportunity to resist your rituals. So those are some ways that you can practice kind of messing with the OCD's pattern. Another strategy that I really love to give my members here at NoCD is non-engagement responses. So non-engagement responses are ways that you can respond to the OCD that acknowledges the intrusive thought or image or obsession, but doesn't allow it to progress or grow any further. We don't want to ignore thoughts. We don't want to dismiss thoughts. We don't want to hate our thoughts or judge our thoughts or try to control our thoughts. Rather, what we want to do is just allow them to be there. We want to accept the thoughts. It doesn't mean that we have to love the thought. It doesn't mean that we agree with the thought. It simply means that we acknowledge it, we notice it, and we're not going to allow it to pursue any further. We're not going to allow it to go any deeper into the rabbit hole. 
And in that way, we acknowledge it, but we're not engaging with it. We're not hooking into that obsession. So some really awesome non-engagement responses that I love to use with my members are things like, okay, or that would stink, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know and I'm never going to know. I think it's really important to have some type of verbal cue, whether it's just a word or some type of phrase, something that resonates with you that allows you to come back into the present moment, allows you to recognize what's going on is an obsession and that you need to treat it like an obsession. Let's really quickly go over some real life examples of how to actually put these practices into play. So let's say that somebody was struggling with relationship OCD and they really wanted to confess to their partner that they saw someone else who was attractive at the grocery store. So, oh my gosh, what does that mean about me? Does my attraction to this random stranger at the grocery store mean that I'm not actually in love with my partner? So their urge, their obsession is what if I'm not attracted to enough to my partner? What if I've done something wrong? Their compulsion is that they want to confess their attraction um, to their partner. What I would encourage them to do is I would ask them, how difficult would it be for you to not confess this, to not mention it whatsoever, and to instead just sit with the discomfort, to allow that uncertainty to be there and to allow OCD's questions to remain unanswered. If that is challenging but manageable, meaning they can do it, even though it's a little bit challenging, I would say, let's just resist it. Let's just try to resist it as much as you possibly can. Now, let's say that that would be way too difficult for that person. Let's say that person said, oh my gosh, no, that would be way too hard. I would panic. I would say, well, what are your thoughts? What about if we postpone it for 20 minutes? Let's see if we can postpone it for 20 minutes. I would have that person then try to postpone that ritual of I'm gonna give myself 20 minutes and then at the end of that 20 minutes, if I still feel the need or as much of a need to ritualize, then I'll see where I'm at at that time. Let's say then that 20 minutes goes by and they still feel an urge to confess. I would wonder if there is a less satisfying compulsion that that person could give into that's not quite as satisfying as exactly what that person wants. Maybe that person finds it less satisfying or less fulfilling to confess that to their friend. I would say, okay, if it's if it still leaves you a little bit uncertain to confess to your friend, but not to your actual partner, I would rather that. I would rather someone do something to kind of take the edge off, but not give OCD exactly what it wants. Now let's say that somebody already kind of without even thinking about it, they went out of their way and they did confess. And then they kind of realized, oh my gosh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. That made me feel awful. That's not consistent with my strategy or what my no CD therapist wants me to do. I would maybe encourage that person to try undoing some of those rituals. So even if that person confessed, maybe they even got reassurance from their partner that no worries, you know, that's fine. That happens. That's normal. Don't worry about it. I would then have that person try to undo that ritual by saying, you know what, maybe that's not okay. Maybe it's okay for my partner, but maybe it's not morally okay. And you know, maybe that actually does mean that I'm not attracted. There are lots of things in this world that I can't know for sure, but I'm not answering all of those questions. So trying to find some way in a way that's challenging but manageable to get yourself to live again back in that uncertainty. We don't want to be in the pursuit of certainty because that's really where OCD thrives. As far as putting the non-engagement responses into play, let's say that you were having intrusive thoughts that you hit someone with your car on accident. So let's say that you were having these images that you might've run over an animal or a child or a person or a biker while you were driving. And as you're driving, you have these thoughts or these images that you just ran someone over and now somebody is suffering because of you. Let's say you have that first initial image and as a non-engagement response, I would encourage somebody to say, oh, wow, okay. And let's say you keep driving a little bit more. Now that person might even have another secondary intrusive thought of, wow, you're not gonna go back and check? That's so irresponsible. What if someone is back there struggling? Another non-engagement response for that obsession would be maybe, could be, I don't know. And I'm not gonna go back and check. See how we're acknowledging the thought? We're not ignoring it, we're not dismissing it, we're not pushing it away, but we're also not allowing ourselves to get hooked between messing with OCD's patterns in a more behavioral way, even if it's with mental compulsions, by resisting rituals, reducing rituals, postponing rituals, undoing rituals if we have to, and also by practicing these non-engagement responses, we will be able to change the OCD pattern 
reduce your dysfunctional behaviors, reduce avoidance, and get you to the place where you can acknowledge these thoughts and let them come and go without you hooking into them and feeding into the OCD cycle. And if you happen to need a little bit more encouragement or guidance on how exactly to put them into practice, make sure that you're reaching out to us at www.nocd.com and make sure that you download our free Treat My OCD app.